Hello everyone, welcome to Nesso Academy. We have already covered different types of operators in C++. Now is the best time to study precedence and associativity of operators. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic is precedence of operators. First we will understand precedence properly. Then we will move to the second topic to understand associativity of operators. After this, we will understand precedence and associativity table where we will see different types of operators we have and their precedence and associativity. So these are all the topics. Let's start with the first one, precedence of operators. So what is precedence of operators? Precedence of operators helps in deciding which operator will be evaluated first when two or more operators appear in an expression. Let's say we have a complex expression with two or more operators. We call an expression a complex expression when we have two or more operators in that expression. If we have an expression like this, then deciding which operator will be evaluated first is quite important because there is the high chance that a complex expression may yield two or more possible answers. An expression must always yield one possible answer. There cannot be two or more possible answers of an expression. Therefore, Understanding which operator should be evaluated first is important and this is decided by precedence of operators. An expression that evaluates to two or more possible answers is called an ambiguous expression. Precedence helps in eliminating the ambiguity of an expression by deciding the operator that needs to be evaluated first. So here is the second point. It helps in evaluating an expression without ambiguity. This means it removes ambiguity from an expression. It gives us just one possible answer from an expression because it helps in deciding which operator will be evaluated first in a complex expression. Now to understand this properly, let's take one simple example. Let's say we have this example 2 plus 3 times 4. This expression is a complex expression because it has two operators. Now here deciding the specific operator which will be evaluated first is quite important because this expression can give us two possible answers. If we evaluate the multiplication first, then we will get 2 plus 12 because 3 times 4 is 12. Now the addition will be performed. We will get 14 as the result. This is the first possible answer. Now if we evaluate the addition first, then we will get 5 times 4 because 2 plus 3 is 5 and 5 times 4 is 20. So this is the second possible answer. We are getting two possible answers for this expression. An expression must always yield one possible answer. But here we are getting two possible answers. So clearly this expression is an ambiguous expression. It has two possible answers. Now here we need to remove the ambiguity because an expression must always yield one possible answer. And ambiguity can be removed with the help of precedence of operators. Now we need to decide which operator must be evaluated first. Now how do we decide which operator should be evaluated first? This can be decided by precedence of these operators. Please understand that multiplication has more precedence than addition. This is already decided. So precedence of multiplication is more than the addition. Therefore, 
multiplication must be performed first and then the addition. So we have decided the order of evaluation. This is done based on the precedence of these operators. So what do you think? What is the correct answer? The correct answer is 14, not the 20. Because multiplication has to be performed first and then the addition. There is no other possible answer. I hope this is clear to you. So we are getting 14 as the result, not 20. And therefore, there is only one possible answer for this expression. Now, the ambiguity is removed from this expression. So, we can say that precedence helps in deciding which operator will be evaluated first when two or more operators appear in an expression. And it also helps in evaluating an expression without ambiguity. So, with this, we have understood precedence properly. This means we are done with the first topic. Now let's move to the second topic to understand associativity of operators. Now what is associativity of operators? We have already learned the significance of precedence. We know what precedence does, what role it plays. With the help of precedence, we can decide the order of evaluation of operators. It decides which operator will be evaluated first based on the precedence of operators. But there can be a possibility that an expression can have more than one operators with same precedence. If that's the case, then precedence cannot play its role. Because if the operators have the same precedence, then we cannot decide the order of evaluation of the operators. Now here comes the role of associativity. Associativity helps in deciding the direction of evaluation when two or more operators with same precedence appear in an expression. So, when we have more than one operators with same precedence, then associativity plays its role. It helps in deciding the order of evaluation in an expression. Now, let's take an example to understand this. Let's say we have this expression 20 divided by 5 times 2. Here we need to decide whether the division will be performed first or the multiplication. Now here precedence cannot play its role because division and multiplication have the same precedence. Now here associativity can play its role. Here we need to decide the order of evaluation because this expression gives us two possible answers. If we evaluate multiplication first, we will get 20 divided by 10 because 5 times 2 is 10. Now, 20 divided by 10 is 2. This is the first possible answer. Now, if we evaluate division first, we will get 4 times 2 because 20 divided by 5 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. This is the second possible answer. Now, we need to decide which answer is the correct answer. As I have mentioned this already, these operators have the same precedence. Therefore, associativity has to play its role. Associativity helps in deciding the direction of evaluation. The direction of evaluation of these operators is left to right. This is already decided. So, in the order they appear, we need to evaluate in the same way. We need to evaluate division first, then the multiplication. So clearly, this answer is incorrect. This one is correct. So now we know that we need to perform division first and then the multiplication. The same order the operators are appearing in an expression, we need to evaluate this expression. I hope this is clear to you. So this is the meaning of associativity. It helps in deciding the order of evaluation. Especially in those cases when we have more than one operators with same precedence. So with this we have understood the concept of associativity as well. 
This means we are done with the second topic. Now let's move to the third topic to understand the precedence and associativity table. Now here I'm going to list down the precedence of a different category of operators. I will also list down the operators under each category and I will provide the associativity of each. Also, please note that not every operator that we will see in this table is covered before this lecture. There are some operators which we will cover later in this course. Also, here I am not going to list down all the operators that we have in C++. I will only list down the important ones. Now, here comes the first category of operators, which is scope resolution. Under this category, we have just one operator, the scope resolution operator. Associativity is left to right and it has the highest precedence among all the operators. Lower the value of the precedence, higher the precedence of the operator. So clearly, if the operator has the precedence of 1, then that operator has the highest precedence among all the operators in C++. Okay, now let's move to the second category, which is postfix like. Under this category, we have these operators. We have the postfix increment and postfix decrement operators. A is some operand, I am assuming. Apart from this, we have function cast operator, which allows us to do type casting. These brackets are used for arrays, and this is the arrow operator we will study later. Associativity of these operators is also left to right. Now, here comes the third category, unary. Under this category, we have these unary operators. We have pre-increment and pre-decrement operators. Then we have unary plus, unary minus, logical not, bitwise not. We have the indirection operator and the address of operator. These operators are used mainly with pointers. Then we have the size of operator, which allows us to get the size of some specific data type. And then we have new and delete operators. These operators are used to allocate or deallocate memory for us. These are all unary operators and their associativity is right to left. Their precedence is 3. Then comes the fourth category, which is pointer to member. Here we have these operators, which we have not studied yet. We have member object selector and member pointer selector. These operators have the left to right associativity. Then comes the fifth category, which is multiplicative. We are well aware about these operators. These are arithmetic operators. Multiplication, division and mod. These operators have left to right associativity and their precedence is 5. Then comes additive category with operators binary plus and binary minus. Associativity is left to right and precedence is 6. In this list, we can observe that unary operators have the associativity right to left. The rest of the operators have the associativity left to right. Now, here comes the seventh category, which is shift with operators left shift and right shift. These operators have left to right associativity. Their precedence is 7. The eighth category is relational with operators less than, greater than, less than, equal to, greater than, equal to. Associativity is left to right. Then we have equality category with operators equal to and not equal to. Associativity is left to right and precedence is 9. The tenth category is bitwise AND with bitwise AND operator as the only operator and the associativity of this operator is left to right. We can observe the precedence is 10. Then we have bitwise XOR and bitwise OR operators. We can see from this table 
that these operators do not have the same precedence. They have different precedences. The precedence of bitwise AND is more than the precedence of bitwise XOR and the precedence of bitwise XOR is more than the precedence of bitwise OR. These operators have associativity left to right. Then we have logical AND and logical OR operators. Again, logical AND has more precedence than logical OR, but associativity is same. Associativity is left to right. Now here comes the conditional operator with associativity right to left. Then after this, we have the category assignment with all assignment operators. Their associativity is right to left. After this, we have the comma operator with least precedence among all the operators. This is the comma operator with associativity left to right. Some of the operators we have not studied yet. We will study those operators later in this course. From this table, it is clear what is the precedence of the operators and what are their associativity. So with this, we are done with the precedence and associativity table. And this means we are done with all the topics of this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.